Hi guys, this is Goose, and in this video we're going to be looking at the guitar strings, famous rock guitar players. Let's start with top dog, Eric Clapton. Eric stated in his autobiography that early in his career he used very thin Clifford Essex strings. And apparently these were 8, 11, 16, 24, 32 and 42. In order to achieve this gauge of strings, he would use a banjo string on the high E. In the cream era, Clapton used the Fender rock and roll electric guitar strings. And according to his own words, these strings were used on his Les Paul during the recording of Wheels of Fire in 1968. The Fender Rock and Roll set usually refers to the Fender 150 set, which features the gauges 10, 13, 15, 26, 32 and 38. There was a Sound City Eric Clapton model strings available and they came with an ultra light gauge set, which were 8, 5, 11, 14, 24, 30 and 38. In an interview in 1970, Eric said that he'd now switched to Ernie Ball Super Slinky set on his Fender Stratocaster, which was Brownie. And the gauge of those strings were 9, 11, 16, 24, 32 and 42. More recently, he has been using thicker strings, as his former guitar tech Lee Dixon states. Eric has been using Ernie Ball strings on his electric guitar. And according to the Ernie Ball website, he uses regular Slinky set, which are 10, 13, 17, 26, 36 and 46. Okay guys, next up is Eddie Van Halen. Eddie used the Fender 150 XL set, which are 9, 11, 15, 24, 32, 40. And he used his strings in the early days. In the 80s, he made a deal with Ernie Ball, who basically produced the same set for Eddie. More recently, he moved over to use their custom designed EVH premium guitar strings. And that's basically it, except Dreisel Zappa has stated that Eddie sometimes used a lighter gauge of around seven on the high E. David Gilmour has used a customized set of JHS Boomers. The gauges are 10, 12, 16, 28, 38 and 48. He has used this custom gauge on his electric guitars ever since the late 70s. GHS developed a custom signature set for David, which is currently sold. There are two versions available. One is the 10 to 48 set, which David uses on his Stratocasters. And one is the 10.5 to 50 set, which he apparently uses on his Les Pauls. The Les Paul set goes 10.5, 13, 17, 30, 40 and 50. Next up is Slash. And according to Slash, he has always used Ernie Ball strings. Slash is currently using a custom set of Ernie Ball Paradigm strings which are the gauge of 11 to 48. But also bear in mind that Slash tunes down as well. And the gauge is as follows, 11, 14, 18, 28, 38 and 48. The main thing Slash wanted with these particular strings was that they would last and have durability. Okay guys, here we have the great Jimmy Page. And just like his friend Eric Clapton, he also didn't use a regular high string he would use a tenor banjo string. And this of course was because around the mid 60s, you could only find guitar string sets, which were 12s or 13s. In a 1977 Guitar Player article, Jimmy states that he used Ernie Ball Super Slinky strings. This was a nickel wound set, and the strings were 9, 11, 16, 24, 32, and 42. And Jimmy used these strings on all his electric guitars. Jimmy was quoted in a guitarist magazine in July 2003. As a rule, the Les Paul was always strung up with an 8. Later on, you know how people in the 1980s made strange decisions, how they looked, what music they played. I don't think I looked too bad in the 80s, but I definitely changed my strings because of the heavy sets that were around then. But I forgot that the really good guitar sounds have been done with all this quite light stringing. And now we have the great Tony Iommi. Tony has actually used Labella strings since 1990. This is a company based in New York. Tony uses two different gauges for his live guitars. For his D-sharp tuning, he uses three plain strings, which are 8, 8 and 11, and the three round strings, which are 18, 24 and 32. And for the C-sharp tunings, he used 9, 10, 12, and then the wound strings, 20, 32 and 42. One of the main reasons that Tony uses this light gauge strings is because at 17, whilst working at a metal shop between gigs, in a freak accident, the index and middle finger of his right fretting hand were cut off and therefore he had some special finger caps made that would enable him to keep playing the guitar. Now we turn to Jeff Beck. In the old days, Jeff was similar to Eric Clapton and Jimmy Page and that he would use very light strings on his Les Paul, most probably Clifford Essex strings with the banjo string as a high E. 
And he especially used to sit on his Les Paul because, as he said, he has very weak flesh on the tips of his fingers. Later on, he switched to an 11 to 49 set. But since then, he has also used 10 to 52 and 9 to 52 gauges. And now it's Keith Richards. His string gauge is 11, 15, 18, 30, 42. And of course, he only uses five strings on his famous Telecaster. The tuning is G, D, G, B, D. And this tuning was taught to him by both Brian Jones and Raikuda. Steve Vai has pretty much always used the Ernie Ball Super Slinky set, which are 9, 11, 16, 24, 32 and 42. However, there have been some forum posts out there with him beginning tours with a gauge 7 string on the high E and working up to 9s. Steve also occasionally uses 10s, like when he plays a Stratocaster. Let's talk about Randy Rhodes, guys. In a John Sticks interview, John stated that Randy used JHS strings outside England and Picasso strings in England, and it was either 10s or 11s. The nickel-plated boomer set 10, 13, 17, 26, 36 and 46. Next up is Peter Green. Unfortunately, not much is known about Peter's string gauge, but whilst researching for this video, I found somebody on a forum has stated that they jammed with him in 1970, and apparently he had 12s on his burst. Next, we have the great late Gary Moore. Gary used Dean Markley guitar strings. Gary says himself, I string my guitars with Dean Markley's, sometimes 10 to 52, and sometimes 9 to 48. Honestly, I only hear the difference in gauge on the bottom strings, not the top. On his famous song, Still Got the Blues, Gary used a Dean Markley set, which was 10, 13, 17, 30, 42, and 52. Let's take a look at Joe Santriani's strings. When asked by a fan what strings he used, he says, Actually, I was like 9 to 42 forever. I just really like those. Once I started playing with chicken foot though, we dropped down half a step. Strings got too floppy, so I decided to move up to 10s. I've stayed at E flat. It was mainly for the convenience, but in the back of my mind I kept thinking, Hendrix was an E flat. Lots of great bands stay in E flat. So I just kind of stayed there. I kind of like the sound of it. Once in a while, I miss 9 to 42 at 440 hertz. It's pretty snappy sounding. It seems like since 2009 or something like that, that we made the switch, E flat tuning using 10 to 42. If I've got a guitar set up for slide only, I'll put on 11s or 12s there and I'll raise the action, but that's about it. I don't think I really changed gauge specifically, like on JS guitars or maybe on some of my vintage guitars, unless for some reason they're really funky guitars. Some of those vintage guitars are pretty funky and they only work one way. When Richie Blackmore was asked what strings he used in the early days of Deep Purple, he replied, I like a 10 on top, but I use very light strings for the B and G, usually a 12 for the B and a 13 or 14 for the G. Jeff Beck likes to use light strings on top, but very heavy strings on the bottom. Everyone to their own. I like more of an even type feel across the strings. Whilst in the band Rainbow, Richie was again asked what strings he used. He replied, I use Picato strings. I've always used them. They're the best. Eric Clapton turned me on to these. He's now using Fender. I don't know why. Why Ernie Ball has a monopoly on strings, I'll never know. The gauges I use are 10, 11, 14, 26, 36 and 42. Let's find out guys what strings the one and only Yingen Mamsin uses. Yingen says, people have an illusion that heavy strings will give you more sustain. Bullshit, he says. I use a hybrid 8 to 48 set because thicker unwound strings don't make much of a difference. Yet they're harder to play. The thicker wound strings do make a difference for chunky low end. On a regular 8 set, the low strings are like spaghetti. What's also important is making sure the guitar's action allows the string to vibrate freely and breathe more. That's where your sustain comes from, not heavy strings. Fender actually make a set for Yingin. Fender have released a Fender Yingin Malmsteen signature electric guitar set. 8, 11, 14, 22, 32 and 46. Let's look at Billy Gibbons strings. Currently, he is using a custom set made by Dunlop. The gauge is 7, 9, 11, 20, 30 and 38. The reason he changed to such a light gauge was because of some advice BB King gave him. Billy recalls in his own words an encounter he had with BB King. BB King told Billy, back in the day when there was only one set of strings available, the black diamond, one gauge, we used to do a trick. We used to have to throw away the big E string and move everything down one 
and then borrow a banjo string to make a light gauge set. Then along comes Jimmy Dunlop. He accepted the challenge to make something lighter than the lightest gauge up until recently, which was the 8. That was a super slinky on the high end. Now we have the Reverend Willie Mexican Lottery brand, which is a 7 gauge string. Okay guys, and lastly we're going to look at El Compadre Carlos Santana strings. Carlos uses the GHS Carlos Santana Big Call, which are 9.5, 11.5, 16, 25, 33 and 43. And these strings were designed by Rennie Martinez, who served in the past as Carlos's guitar tech. Thanks guys for watching this video. This is Goose signing out. I'll be back real soon with some more videos. Thank you.